and this would actually involve Jeff as well. We get a room, put a microphone, put a microphone, what? Yeah, remove the video game, see if she goes nuts. Okay. Because I think maybe she's got too much stuff in it. Yeah, she could get sucked into that video game and never come out of it again. All right. You know what I mean? Maybe she's got too much stimulation in there. If you took out TV and you took out um, video games, what would she do? Then she'd be forced to make fun. Right. She still has the, uh, the karaoke machine. That's right. And the, and the drums. That's all she needs. Yeah, I could listen. This, I could listen to her sing all day. <laughs> I just think that that's the first thing her mother hears so every him, morning. So tell him to unplug the video game. Say, oh, it must be broken. We'll go fix it. And then right. just don't bring it back. Oh, and she'll go crazy. Tell her she needs to call somebody to get it fixed. And tell her the TV's broken, too. I, and should I tell her that, you know, she may have to call someone to get it fixed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell her cousin Brucey needs it. Hey, you moron. It's not plugged in. <laughs> Does she have mobility with us? Could she actually leave that room and, like, walk through the halls? Mm. I don't know. I'll find out. Right. I don't. I don't think so, but I'm not sure. All right. You have any ideas for me, Howard? Yeah, I do. What's that? We've had plenty for you. You'd never take them. Like get a job. I tell those guys to get someone to put up ten grand. All right. What guys? To put up ten grand for what? Well, for listen. Here's my idea. Okay. We take Jeff, Beetlejuice, Gary the retard, Wendy the retard, all of the whack pack, Elephant mm -hmm. Boy, you know, whoever you can think of, and we say someone has to be the Pope. Of the whack pack, the head guy. We were gonna have the con clan, right? right? And the, they the whack clan, right? Yeah. They can't leave the room until they choose a pope. Until they choose a pope, and he gets the ten grand, and he's the pope, the head guy of the whack pack. And they have to talk it out and talk it through. And the and, mics are and on. And the mic just is there. It could go for five days, and then when they finally elect a pope, they they light something on fire and the smoke, and they burn down the building or whatever they do, <laughs> and then and we hear the whole negotiation. Wow. When did you want to do this? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? No, I'm saying like maybe a week from now. Two weeks. Yeah. I don't think it'll last very long. I do. You do? Who's going to be the Who? arguing? They're all going to argue. They all want 10 grand, and they all want to be the leader of the WAC pack. Wait a minute. The WAC pack is electing the Pope, and the Pope gets the 10 grand? That's right. Oh, you didn't tell me that part. That's what I'm telling you. Now you're talking, because they're all going to want the 10 grand. Now you're talking. Right. But so, Jeff thinks he should be the Pope, I'm sure. They're not allowed to share the money. One winner, <laughs> someone's oh got God. it, and they've got to somehow elect a Pope. You'll have, they, they'll kill each other. No, nope, not allowed to get physical. <laughs> Who's going to be standing in there? Not me. Tim Sabian. What do you think, Artie? <laughs> I think it's uh, the greatest idea in the history of radio. <laughs> <laughs> and you tune in, you listen to the uh, negotiations. I, I, I would... There's nothing wrong with that. Like, Jeff... Uh, I mean, any level, it's fantastic. Jeff, how would you convince Beetlejuice that you should be the... Oh, wait, Ralph says Wendy and the video games are funny. Hold on. Oh, really? Um, wait, hold on. I gotta get some feedback, because I can't hear it. What yeah, is it, Ralph? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 don't stop her, because it's funny, because she's, like, talking smack and, 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 like, mumbling and breathing heavy, and you hear the game on in the background. It's great. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't stop her. Gary, don't stop her. <laughs> I just sent him in. He's unplugging it as we speak. Oh, Tell him to no. plug it back in. <laughs> oh, no, it's funny. Tell him to go... For, what's... Are they unplugging it now? L like, literally. In fact, Wait, he, said, he's, he said, what should I tell her? And I said, just tell her to turn around and unplug she it. She said, all right. Oh, it's dead air now. She just said, all right. All right. Should she plug it back in? Wait a minute, let's see. What, what should happens. we do? I got, I got Tim on the phone. What should we Maybe do? Maybe you yeah, just plug it in. Let her play. Let her play. Let her play. She's mumbling. Oh. I'm going over there later. Later, I want to play with her. All right. So why don't you go over now? What are you waiting for? Hey, he doesn't want to get up too early. Yeah. yeah. Just go over there now. <laughs> All right. I'll go over a little bit. All right. If That's it's fine. funny, leave it going. I'm just yeah. going by what people are telling right. me. Yeah. Like she's like I. She said she'll be on the PlayStation. What'd she say? I beat all punks at PlayStation. Yeah, but she's going to beat you too, Ralph. <laughs> well, Ralph's a punk. <laughs> Great. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah, let Come her on. do her thing. All right. All right, oh, God. I wonder if Wendy has had to uh, go to the bathroom. Is she eating? What is she doing? Hey, they better follow her when she goes to the bathroom. Does they have a scale for her too? <laughs> yeah, they should wear it. <laughs> hey, Gary, if she goes to the bathroom, they got to keep the mic on her. My mother said no skill for me. They, they have almost no mobility, Howard. Bob, well, where does she go to the bathroom? I guess she goes to the ladies' room. I'll tell them to get a wireless on. Then tell the news department to cover her in the bathroom. Gary. Yeah. Tell the news department to cover her in the bathroom. Got it. All right, goodbye. And is she eating? Does she get to order food? What is she doing? For food? It sounds like she's going to the bathroom now.
I need to supervise. Yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> if they, are they feeding her? Or does she have to ask for things? What's going on? You just hear her breathing heavily. Tell those news humps to get on this. <laughs> They're all fired. You're fired! Because I thought she'd have to get her own food and all that stuff. I wonder if she's eating. That must be gross. Hey, I gotta play you a tape of Joan Rivers. Oh, that's right. You said having you had a meltdown. This tape. You guys got it here. Hey, Jeff, thanks. Okay, hey, have a good one. Yeah, later. Is she on the air, or is this like a... This is... Yeah, she's on a talk show called Radio 4. I think it's in England. Right. And some black guy goes, uh, you know, Joan, I know you don't like the... I know that this Joan doesn't like the word black. And Joan goes ballistic. She goes, what, who, I don't even know you. You ready? Okay. It's great. She tells this dude off. <laughs> Did the film help, or was the film a problem to, to your real-life relationship? No, the film, the film helped enormously. It helped enormously, because if we are, we are aware that, that all England is looking at this, and we're not playing it, we're not playing it. Sounds like maybe he's an Indian dude. I don't know what he I is. I don't know what this is. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. Here, well, okay, I'm ruining it. Here, just listen. We're not, this is not trauma. This is you and me. Because there are hundreds of thousands of Caribbean children since Black Offense Joan, I will make it. Wait, wait, no, just <laughs> stop right now. Black does not offend me. How dare you? How dare you say that? Black offends me? You know nothing about me. You sat down here. How I dare you? The use of the term Black Offense. Well, uh, the use of the term Black Offends me? Where the hell are you coming from? You have got such a chip on your shoulder. I don't give a damn if you're black, white, I do. black. I couldn't care less. It's what the person is. And don't, no, and don't you dare call me a racist. I don't know you. And I, don't think, I don't think it was personal, You said the term black offends me? I don't think it was personal, Oh, I think it was when someone says... The term black offends Joan. I will not oh, sit here and be sad that. How dare you I say that? I think this is a me? language problem. No, I don't. Caribbean I think this is a problem in your Caribbean. stupid head. You had a child. You left them. Your wife said you weren't there. You married a woman. You deserted her. Now your son comes back. He's got problems. Where were you when he was growing up? May, till may, he was eight years old. May we continue? Old. Yes, you uh, sir. But don't you dare call me a racist. Yeah, yeah. Don't you dare call me a racist. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. I know, yeah. but I will not be that. I will not. I, I, I dare I, you. I have great sympathy with both sides, but I am starting to feel like Oprah. Then you're a racist. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, aren't you a man? I, I mean, it's uh, how stupid it's going to say that. Now, please continue. But don't you dare call me that, son of a bitch. <laughs> right, Darkus, can we just, can we yes, just say that... Yes, please continue that, about this wonderful father no, who left his three children. Can we just say that you don't think Joan is a racist and then perhaps we can move you're on? damn right. I, I will not I continue. Don't, I don't know whether she's a racist or not. I don't care. You said the word black offense. Normally I wouldn't... the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Normally I don't, wouldn't ever meet but you in my you, life. No, nor would I please choose to meet you. Okay. No, I can't. Hey, listen, we're going to... No, she's not a racist. We're going to okay, okay, right, okay. talk about your stupid film. Right. Can we talk about your tour, Joan? I, joke I know. Uh, at your and in your one. I don't. I don't think you You're brought me here to be insulted. And no one knows it was I brought here to be insulted by someone to be called let's, a racist. Let's go on with my film. Please go on with your film. I think. No, I think we, we have to move on now for time reasons to to Joe. Please go to Andrea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Andrea, should we talk about plant photography? Please. <laughs> well, while Joan and Darkus glare at each other in the corner, I think <laughs> you see this is why we bring in plant photographers in moments like this. Uh, that is wow, fantastic. I it. You love that? Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'll play it again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> that's a right. Don't you dare call me a racist. How dare you, you son of a bitch. Niagara Falls. <laughs> Slowly <laughs> I turn. Yep. Yeah, the woman's trying to comment. I see both sides. Both sides. <laughs> how dare you? How dare you? How dare you call me a <laughs> I will not sit. I will not sit. <laughs> what was that guy trying to say? I don't know. Sure. Well, something must have been said earlier, because, I mean, she definitely, like, went from zero to 100 in two seconds. Yeah. Whatever he said didn't merit that response. Yes, so, please sit down and talk to this wonderful father. Go ahead and talk about your stupid movie. Well, obviously, you pushed the button, and then that right. was it. He couldn't get anything out. He started <laughs> off saying, uh, this movie is about Caribbean children, because I know Joan doesn't like the word black, and that came out of nowhere. I have never been more drunk. What? What? Oh, maybe 
she she doesn't like him well, saying it's about black children, which I don't know. Maybe she doesn't like. Black sounds to me like she didn't say anything. Yeah, she was waiting for her turn. It sounded like to me. Yeah, Chris. Hey, what's up, buddy? Hey. Hey, I gotta tell you, man, the funniest thing is listening to Fred get worked up when you talk about Jackie. Yeah, that's his that's his Achilles heel. He, he gets nuts. Dude, don't say nothing, and then all of a sudden he just goes off the wall, bro. That's his slowly I turn. Yeah. That's great. Fred hey, doesn't like it, man. I, I hear that BS coming out of his mouth, and it just gets me nuts. I love it. F, F Jackie, long live already, baby. You uh, better not listen to Howard 100 News, Fred. You might have an aneurysm. I, I may not have <laughs> Uh, let's go to Robin's news. Like Yes, I read this in the paper yesterday, but I, I guess I wanted time to absorb it. There was an article in the paper yesterday by John Minnelli about who's replacing us when we leave to go to ah, ah, ah. Right, ah, ah, ah. And he said that, you know, the speculation is, of course, that um, David Lee Roth and Adam... Corolla will be taking over some stations, but what was even more interesting was that they said, you know, we've been hearing that they're talking about six or seven hosts around the country who will buy for, uh, you know, their positions. Yeah. It says, Infinity has also auditioned or signed outspoken comedian Colin Quinn. Yeah, no, they, they auditioned him, but I don't know. I mean, maybe they signed him. I don't know. They say it's auditioned and or signed. Dark Magician Pendulette. No comment. <coughs> Boston's <laughs> Extreme Games Talker Jay Severin. Wow. And actor David Cassidy. The guy from the Partridge Family? Yeah. I think they got the wrong cat from the Partridge Family. Dan yeah, oh, that's Danny right. Bonaduce. Right. Danny's not allowed to be hired anywhere. <laughs> Forget it. He sort of uh, burned himself out. Though it's not known on which stations in the national um, chain they would appear. So those are some of the names that are being... David Lee Roth's over at Jack FM doing a, doing a practice show every day. Bandy we got to hear that. Yeah, he's practicing doing his show. <laughs> the other thing is that there's um, a rumor that K-Rock might turn into a talk station. Yeah, I, I read that. No comment. I can't say. <laughs> I cannot divulge. Yeah, they may start flirting with FM talk. Flirting. Well, that's cool. I mean, I mean, whatever. You know, do you actually? I, I, I meant to ask you this. Do you care what they do? Not really, but yeah. I just think it's fascinating that they won't tell anybody. What they're gonna do. I, but but I I know for I'm telling you I know for a fact I'll swear on a stack of Bibles David Lee Roth is replacing us in New York. So why keep it a secret? Everybody else knows. He's over at Jack FM practicing. What? Why are they keeping it a secret? I mean, it's not a secret. <sighs> it's so gay. They should be airing the practices. And by the way, where is this guy? I mean, what do they got him under? What do they got him in the tent? Yeah, all of a sudden you can't find him anywhere. I didn't, hey, little brother, I'm building suspense. He yeah. is in prison. <laughs> I didn't hear it, but I know in D.C. I think uh, Colin Quinn and Nick DiPaolo got a chance to do a show. Oh, together. really? I didn't hear it, but th those are two of the funniest guys on the earth. So I don't. I mean, I'd love to hear what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, they tried him out. But. Um, the radio is a different thing, you know. Radio's a tough thing, man. Day in and day out, getting yeah, up and doing it. It's not stand-up comedy. No, it's a different kind of thing, but yeah, those guys might be good at it. I don't Who know. Who knows? They're definitely great, uh, mm. you know, at um, having funny opinions about stuff. Yeah, my, my, my days of doing this kind of stuff, my, it's so far behind me. I mean, I was talking to Robin in the commercials. Me doing the news department where I'm going and, and, and listening to the things, just putting Wendy on for 24 hours for the hell of it. Yeah. yeah it's, it's where my heart is now. I don't, I don't, you know, I want to take the whack pack and stick them in a room for 24 hours. She, you know? she ordered breakfast. They said, what do you want? She goes, cookies and donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't she know those are both carbs? Now, wait a minute. How is that different from my breakfast? But she says it like, what else would you possibly yeah, have? Yeah, well, cookies that's breakfast and donuts. food, right? I wanted to ask you, Howard, on the news, did you choose the comedian segments? Because you have some live stand-up in between, which is pretty cool. Uh, no, no, I didn't choose those segments. That's the news department. All right. I found it to be odd, like Richard Lewis was chosen. I know, but we're, we're working on a lot of Okay, yeah. all right, all right. Yeah. Still tweaking. And still... Jackie Marling, which I like. Well, because he I gave an interview. It. Yeah. But uh, that could have even been shortened up a little. It's funny, every time yeah. I heard a Jackie joke live, I just heard Fred's voice impersonating it in the background. <laughs> yeah, well... You do it yourself. Yeah, but, but uh, I, I've given them complete autonomy. That's they do great. what they want. And, you know, there's some things you want to hear, some you don't. You know, but it's all about us. It's great. It's yeah. so... When you hear Wendy the retard's mom broadcasting from the car as she's driving Wendy in, it, it just, it's, it sounds like CNN with retarded people. <laughs> it's amazing. The mom is not retarded, by the no, way. No, well, yeah. she makes them.
<laughs> she what? She makes. She makes retarded. Oh, she makes oh. retarded. She makes future stars of this show. <laughs> She's a star maker. Hey, um, Eric's on the phone. I, you know what? I, I just want to do the news at this point, so to, I'll talk to Eric tomorrow. He wants Eric, to... the retarded Eric. High pitch, Eric. Oh, who's high Eric? pitch? We got so many Eric's. This is Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> There's bong hit Eric. There's high pitch Eric. There's Eric the midget. <laughs> Eric the midget. Is that <laughs> I was going to say a lot of Eric's. There actually is no Eric the retard. Right? No, I was thinking, you know, I got him confused. Just because he's short doesn't mean he's retarded. I just, you know, lumped him in there. Hmm. But some of those phone calls are retarded. Have we heard from him? He wants a show. Who? Eric, the midget. I don't think people could handle it. No. I know, but I'm sure, you know, when he hears that other people are getting shows, it's just going to encourage him to call and say, where's his show? Speaking of people who are loved... Bono. I was saying this the other day that everybody's just in love with Bono. Everybody wants him either to perform for them or campaign with them. And yesterday, the president invited him to the White House for lunch. I can't believe I don't get the whole YouTube Bono thing. I'm just so not a part of that. I'm in not the, into in it. In the 80s, you were never into. Nah, I like I like then in the name of the and then yeah. Sunday Bloody Pride, Sunday. Pride. They they had they had three absolutely amazing albums. Like I wasn't into that Tree album. Joshua Tree Joshua. is a great album. Man, I didn't care about it. Yeah, no, doesn't they, mean anything. They, uh, that's when they really got big, though. That's yeah, when they, that's, that was the one. They could start selling out arenas. That was like 87. But their first few albums are just as good as any albums in a while, man. But the thing that has happened to him now is that he's become a politician. Yeah, that happens started, to a lot of guys. He started this whole thing with the World Bank. He wanted to forgive the debt to third world countries. And he actually was able to get to the people who could change the world like that. And they liked him. People are now saying he's one of the best negotiators ever. No. He knows how to talk to people. He just, he gets beyond their reservations and he hits them in a place yeah. where they can't refuse him. I just read he pumped all the water out of New Orleans single-handedly. <laughs> well, I'm just telling you what I hear people saying Blah, about blah, him. blah. I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> Talk about me. Just telling you what they say about Bono. Let's take a break. We'll come back. We'll finish the news. Power Show. We're going to do a tribute to my late wife, who really is the great Martha Ray. How do you keep the song from fading too far? Real men of genius. Real men of genius. Today we salute you, Mr. Humongous Pumpkin Grower Guy. Mr. Humongous Pumpkin Grower Guy. Anyone can grow a regular-sized pumpkin, but only a man with lots and lots of free time can grow a giant super humongous pumpkin. That's not natural. The only thing more enjoyable than seeing a humongous pumpkin Seeing the local hoodlums take a baseball bat to it. Smash, smash, smash it up. What's for dinner? Pumpkin pie. Every day for the next 17 months. Gonna need some whipped cream. So crack open a nice cold Bud Light, oh guru of the gourd. And while you're at it, cut me a piece of that humongous pie. Mr. Humongous Pumpkin Girl. Bud Light yeah. beer at Isobush, St. Louis, Missouri. Announcing the dispersal and sale of one of upstate New York's signature thoroughbred horse. I'm not dieting right now. Believe it or not. So you're eating whole watermelon. I, I like. Yeah, you like it. It but wasn't what a you... whole watermelon. It was. It was a bad watermelon. to eat that here. Robin, Reg, it's a huge. I don't want to bust your chops. It was, it was I, I, as big a half a one. I was running out this morning. I wanted to bring some food. You, you know what? I had it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know he's doing it. All right. It got you guys again. Well, it did work. We talked yeah, about it. We talked about it. You know what? Finally, yes. Why don't you bring a giant pumpkin in? <laughs> I love those guys who walk around. You, you, around October and November is when you see these farmers and they're bragging about their giant pumpkins because the pumpkins are the size of a house. Yeah. <laughs> like like they did something great. Yeah, like what do you do with that after you grow a pumpkin that large? Yeah, and what, how, how does it help you? And they parade these guys out like they're genius farmers. Yeah, I mean, they don't, they don't do it again the next year. No. And like, you know what? So now you grow a giant pumpkin. 
be proud of yourself. Obviously, it was an accident. Yeah. <laughs> How about the Halloween guys who have webs and coffins in their trees? Oh, yeah, they decorate the lawn. R.I.P., you know, Obviously, tombstones. Yeah. And you then mean you sick people? And then you realize they don't have kids. It's just yeah. for, like, them. Yeah, or they're trying to attract kids. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but anyway, with Harriet Myers, the, uh, she has to fill out a questionnaire for the uh, Senate Judiciary Committee. And they have sent it back uh, with an incomplete. They did not like her answers. To the questionnaire, they didn't feel she was forthcoming enough, so she's been given a do-over. She has to fill it out again. Marriage and religion. There is a new uh, study out from the University of Virginia that says your religion could have something to do with whether you'll wind up being divorced. C4. Really? is a sociologist who was a part of this study, Brad Wilcox. And uh, he says that, yes, the kind of religion you practice has something to do with your longevity in the marriage arena. Folks who attend um, church on a weekly basis are between 30 and 40% less likely um, to divorce. Yeah, probably. So you got to go to church every week if you want to get no. keep your marriage together. He also says evangelical churches seem to offer the most support to divorced singles and unwed parents, C5. Evangelical churches, uh, on the one hand, hold up a traditional ideal of marriage, but because they have a strong sense of basically everyone being a sinner, they also tend to offer ministries for people who don't meet their ideals. So you can get into the evangelical church, even if you've broken the rules. Bill Cosby's out with his campaign to uh, make blacks better parents. Mm. And he took his message to Compton in Los Angeles uh, this past week. And he says his message to the black community is that of hope and accountability. D1. Ladies and gentlemen, what we're after here is, is, is options in your life to, to open up these thought waves for you. That's mm. clear. We're looking for options in your life for the thought waves. So some thought waves can come at mm. you? Here's more. Cosby challenged parents to set goals for their kids and encourage them, D2. They're all geniuses. Every last one of them, geniuses. It's just that nobody has told them and proven to them that they are. They're geniuses, but they can't figure it out? How can you be a genius if you can't figure it out? <laughs> well, not everybody was open to Cosby's message. Here's a man on the street who uh, had this to say about what Cosby's up to, D3. Since he's Mr. Multi-Billionaire, talk is cheap. A lot of people can run their mouth about what you should do. Yeah, black people don't like him for some reason. <laughs> hey, hi, Patriarch's on the phone about something. Hey, Ark. Yeah, I don't know what you're supposed to do. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wendy was going nuts because she was screaming she has to go to the bathroom. So then why don't they let her go? I don't know. She was just screaming like crazy. She said, I have to pay. I have to pay. I'm going nuts that I'm not hearing that. Yeah. You gotta get a mic in there right now. There is a mic in there now. There I, I'm just not allowed to listen. Yeah, there's a mic in there, uh, Eric. That's how you can hear it. Oh, okay. <laughs> she's on the listen. Thanks for explaining radio to him, Marty. <laughs> oh. Hey, Howard. Yeah. So, listen, I need some, uh, like, stuff for... Hey, Eric, first. you understand... What a con man. You what understand... do you mean he needs stuff? What stuff? You understand that next Thursday, you don't have to sit and eat till you explode. I'm concerned I need, about you. No, 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 listen, no, seriously. I need some pickle bars. All right, you got it. I need some Reese's peanut butter cups. You got it. Baby wipes. Okay. Oh, baby no baby wipes. wipes. Oh. No? No. Dude, what dude. are the baby oh. ones for? Mm, I wipe myself after I go. They're good with barbecue sauce. <laughs> All right, you can have baby wipes. Go ahead. I need some toilet paper. Well, of course you'll of have course that. Of course you'll have that. And, and but bottles and bottles of powder. Powder? Yeah. You powder up behind there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you'll, need a you'll need a bottle for each movement. <laughs> a how, about a powder. how about a gun for your nurse? <laughs> no, thank you. And I found the solution no, for thank my you. clothes. <laughs> what? I found the solution for my clothes. You know what? I'm going to lose that bet so bad because... Yeah. It's going to be sad for you. <laughs> I was listening to Dr. Duty on Howard 100 News, and he was really going in-depth on, on the whole thing. Yeah. And, uh... 
I mean, I'm just finished. He, you know, he's saying the over-under should have been seven pounds. Right. Yeah. But you said it. That's why I jumped on it. And yeah. Artie saw it, too. I'm hoping the news goes to, like, the Vegas odds guys and finds out about all the different bets and, you know, all the over under Right, the that. side money. Well, maybe yeah. we can create a happy medium. I love, like, there, there's an interesting way to do this where you create a middle to where... What's that? Let's see. What if, uh, what if I take some action on an over that's a little higher from you? Oh, so you can let's have do a, that on, another bet. Let's do that on Monday. All right, we could talk about it. Gary, tell those guys to put together a round table of some of the best odds makers on some of these websites. Okay. And uh, do a round table on the news tonight. Who knows this subject? To discuss each. Or, you know, get Dr. Duty in there to answer questions. Like get four right. or five guys on the news and, tonight. And then have them set what, what they think uh, the line should have been. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then I can play that here, and uh, we can bet. Yeah, I'm sitting. I don't know. I st I, three and a half pounds is, you know, that's a lot of weight, man. In other words, I got the over at three and a half pounds. But if I set it, if, if we go up to maybe five and a half. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I'll put a little money on that with you, too. Okay. You know, like All that right. type of thing. So I could still win money, but maybe I could win big money. Yeah, seven sounds a little steep to me. Yeah, well, if it was five and a half or six, yeah. there'd be some controversy. Well, between last night and this morning, I think it, it, it looked like it was about three pounds. <laughs> what do you know what it looks like? Because I could tell. What he eyeballed it. it. Yeah. How many times did you go yesterday, honestly? Honestly? Honestly, last night, I went about two times last night. And what about the rest of the day? The rest of the day, I went, I went, I went around three, three times last night during the day. So about five times in that 24-hour period. Right. It looked like it was about three pounds. <laughs> Each time? Yeah. Oh, oh get out! You're saying it was 15 pounds. I'm, I'm a loser. <laughs> he's an elephant. <laughs> There's no way. That, that, he's I, wrong. He I, doesn't I, know. I, I could tell yesterday when after I went. <laughs> three pounds? Yeah. Disgusting. You're like an animal. That is half a kid. That's half an average baby. <laughs> All right, man. I, I, you know what? We'll discuss this on Monday. Okay. Later. Later. Oh, I wish I could have gotten some more action. You will on Monday. When, let these guys on the news get all the odds, yeah. and we'll play it. We'll, we'll figure out a happy uh, medium there. Uh, you know. uh, by the way, there's another hurricane, Hurricane Wilma, and now they're thinking it's going to uh, hit Florida. They've already gotten... Um, the guest, the tourist out of the Keys, and they're probably going to start evacuating the permanent residents sometime today. Wilma is being categorized at, at uh, a five at one point. She went down to a four, but they say it's the strongest storm ever, and don't take it lightly. Hello. It'll probably uh, regain some strength later on today or tomorrow. The Astros are going to the World Series. Oh, yeah. That's Houston. <laughs> the guys already didn't want to go. Here's the manager, Phil Garner. He says the Astros have waited 44 years for this opportunity. E1. James Woods' gargantuan wang is an assault weapon. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that must have had a few drinks. What's his name? Uh, Phil Garner. For us, it's, uh, it's long-suffering. 44 years of, of getting close and not getting to the big dance has been... A, a little bit frustrating. So this is this is a wonderful accomplishment for our city, for our organization, everybody that's been involved in it. One night, James Woods had a sword fight with a young black boy. <laughs> Craig Biggio, I think his name is, can't describe the yeah. feeling of finally getting to the series. E2. Wendy's playing the drums now. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's undescribable right now. I mean, it's just waited so long for this to happen and, and there's been a lot of great players that play the game of baseball that never got an opportunity to go to the World Series and uh, I was hoping that I so would. So who's going to be in the series? It's U I mean, Chicago? Houston. No, Houston. Chicago White, Sox, Chicago White Sox and the Houston Astros. Sounds good. I'm psyched. I'm actually looking forward to watching it. This guy Greg Biggio is a Seton Hall uh, guy. Yeah. Uh, I like him. I'll watch. When's the first game? Saturday. Okay, I'll check it out. Be a big weekend of baseball. Yeah, I'm gonna chill out. And remember last year, right after the uh, Pats won, uh, the New England Patriots won the uh, Super Bowl. This guy suffered a stroke. Who was on the team? Oh, Brewski. Yeah, Ted yeah. Brewski. Well, he's coming back. He had his first practice. That's so wrong. Yesterday, and uh, this is eight months after suffering that oh. stroke. It is wrong.
He, he's got to stop. It really is. You know, like, put together a collection and let him go. He puts, he talks about his first practice, E3. A good amount of nerves. You know, it's, uh, you haven't done something in a long time, and you always have some t some nerves the first time back. What did he stroke out from heat? No, this was no. this was winter time. How no. could he stroke out from heat? What did he stroke out from from freezing? He had like some sort of yeah, some condition maybe even with his heart and stuff. Oh, like he's man. not totally healthy and playing football. Forget it. But had some good reads, had some bad reads. You know, what comes with being the first day. Well, he says the doctors say he can play. Now it's up to him. E four. Everyone has been positive on what I can do, and it has been clear about it's it's up to me whether I want to play football or not. You know, they say I can, so uh, I think having say, having them say that to me. How long has he been playing, Artie? Brewski's probably been in the league maybe eight years. And? For football, it's a long time. How old a guy? Uh, probably, you know, early 30s. Uh -huh. And in football, that's, that's older, man. It's time to uh -huh. hang it up, maybe. He's got a couple of rings, you know? It's like he's got to figure out something. Hey, don't something live your life. Yeah. What well, else? Anything, Robin? He wants Robin? to be on the field. You know how that goes. Yeah, you know what? I want to be in Pam Anderson's bed right now. Right. <laughs> Jordan, Michael Jordan, will be on 60 Minutes this Sunday to say he does not have a gambling problem, even though he has been stupid. His problem is everybody keeps <laughs> commenting on his gambling. How do you have a gambling problem if you have a billion dollars? <laughs> yeah, that's right. He does. <laughs> you don't. Well, he says, I've never risked my family or I, my life. That's what I'm saying. I had 500 bucks to my name once. I put a grand on a jet game. That's a gambling problem. Hey, this just in. It's officially tomorrow. Okay, and finally, <laughs> the uh, parents' council. <laughs> yeah. That TV watching group. Yeah, yeah, they're good. Thank you. For I love they them. They have put yeah. out their list of the worst TV shows, and six of them are on Fox. I bet you I'm five of them. <laughs> it's good. I have my fingers crossed for us to be one of them, yeah. Six of them were on Fox of the top ten. Uh, they only like, they had a top ten list of the best as well they were supposed to put together. They only liked nine shows. They couldn't even find ten. Wow. Uh, ABC's Extreme Makeover Home Edition was one of the shows they said was good. Imagine if you listen to these idiots how boring television would be. Dancing with the Stars, Fox's American Idol, and NBC's Three Wishes are uh, among the favorites. What do they think of our 24-hour retarded coverage? <laughs> you know, I think we're off this scale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We don't even get rated anymore. Uh, that's going to be on video, too. It's coming out on <laughs> Think our about it. What would you rather watch, that or My Name is Earl? <laughs> yeah, right. I'd rather watch Wendy playing drums. It's not even a question. Yeah. They hated The War at Home, that Fox uh, new Fox series. They said that's one of the worst. Family Guy is bad. American Dad is bad. They were the top three worst shows. Mm -hmm. CBS's CSI and ABC's Desperate Housewives were also on the list right. of the worst shows on television right. for the family. There you go. They are encouraging children not to watch those. And finally this morning, Ryan Seacrest will be sitting in for Larry King on a number of shows. Oh, okay. good. <laughs> they say uh, <laughs> it looks to be the first step in an overall deal between Seacrest and CNN. Well, I didn't think uh, that show could get worse. <laughs> yeah, they found a way. <laughs> they did it. So there you go. That's Good. what's happening. Fabulous. CNN and Ryan Seacrest teaming up. Oh, and congratulations to Jennifer Aniston. She's been pictured making out with Ben Vaughn. Oh. They're just friends, I thought she said. I think she's going the right way. At least this guy can make her laugh. Yeah, but it's got to be a real drag looking at him after Brad Pitt. <laughs> well, I don't think she'll stay with him. I think she'll go with a pretty good boy. Yeah. But this is a nice interim guy. Yeah. It's probably like, oh, my God, I'm really used to looking at Brad Pitt. <laughs> Christ, I could care less. It's like if you, you know, you're drinking, like, $3,000 bottle of wine and they put some ripple under you. <laughs> All, right. All right, well, everyone, we'll see you tomorrow. Um, thanks for tuning in. I want to thank uh, special guest Stevie Wonder. Yes. What a treat. Yeah, what a that, was, that was awesome. Uh, Stevie's new album out, A Time to Love. Uh, featuring the single Shelter in the Rain. It's available in stores now. And also, uh, James Woods, thank you, my friend. Uh, James Woods Poker Site, HollywoodPoker.net. Give a little plug. This was a long show. I'm, I'm going to go get some dinner. Yeah, I think I'll go to sleep here. What were those five <laughs> burgers? That wasn't dinner? <laughs> well, that's a little preamble. See you, Ronnie's uh, birthday party there, uh, my friend. Oh, yeah. Cannot wait. Yeah, we haven't hung out like that in a while. Yeah, it's going to be well, fun. Well, Artie's been on the wagon. Well, we had, we had Moderation. Dinner. We had dinner the other night. It was, that was, a lot, that was actually a lot of fun. Yeah, but there were a lot of parties while you were... Oh, guys! Yeah.
Hey, look what we're doing. We're, we're doing more shows. Yeah. 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 All right, okay. We'll be back tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Great Rock, period, 92.3, K-Rock. And then uh, Cardinal Egan will be on in about 30 seconds. Senator Edward Kennedy is here with us this morning. It's always good to uh, see the Senator. And after you can come. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be anyway. Please welcome now, officially to the Army Sidorian program, uh, over from the Archdiocese, uh, Cardinal Egan. Good morning, Cardinal Egan. Good morning, you call, bless. I think it's good to be here, I miss the mark. I think it'd be rather to be delivering Chinese food at night in the apartment in the Mount Next Projects in the South Bronx or some damn place, I miss the Speaking of which, let me right out of the box, I miss the mark. First, express the Archdiocese's condolences to you and having to euthanize your precious little cat. So let there be no doubt. Not the first time the I-Mark put his pussy to sleep, he Except this time she wasn't underneath you, you impotent schmuck, he gave. Move on, you moron. You stop milking the dead cat. Nobody cares. <laughs> Good to see my card back, I miss the mark. <laughs> safe, and, <laughs> safe and sound. It is exciting weekend in Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> the mid with Nazi get two-stepping going. You thought I must confess, I miss the mark. Yeah. Every time I see old McMahon on TV, Hey, McMahon on TV, that is, I miss the mark. Yeah, thank you. It's <laughs> live radio. What the hell do you expect, he gave. Ed McMahon cashing in on his association with dead Johnny Carson. I have this image of McCord looking at the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Rubbing his hands together and licking his lips, BG. Don't worry, McCord, relax. Your day's coming soon enough, boy, old BG. Just really smack you. Thank you, Carl. Let me just say this, Amos, tomorrow, to that fuck-tooth bow-tied learned buffoon, Louis Farrakhan, orchestrated that silly million moron march in Washington over the weekend, Amos, tomorrow. Do me a favor, Farrakhan. March on over here and kiss my mammy Johnny White hands, why don't you, BG? You two hate and jerk off your BGs. Make you sick. Speaking of Jew haters, I miss the morn. A lot of talk this week about the Iraqi Constitution, because sure. it's laughable. The Iraqi Constitution, oxymoronic, like intelligent Amos listener, because <laughs> the laughable it wasn't so deadly, I miss the morn. Yeah. Trying to teach these jokers democracy like trying to teach a paraplegic to dance the polka, because make no damn sense. I'll tell you what, I miss the morn. Yeah. Mary, Mary Jo Kopecky will be governor of Massachusetts before this stupid experiment works, because make you sick. <laughs> these struggle they still use their hands to wipe their foot. The men are ugly and the women smell. You can always tell when a woman is having a period, I'm just going to have a game. No, 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 no. Only wearing one damn sock, the game. Oh, come on here. Take President Bonehead out, put him in the fire and scrub, If that wasn't enough, I'm just going to It appears that former Catholic slut Madonna has now transformed herself into some kind of church fashion wacky pious Jew. Sounds to me like some sneaky, cunning stunt, I'm just going to I'm not so stunning with rhymes with punch, you just got to forgive me. Let us pray. Let us pray, I'm just going Get your filthy heads down, you hooligan. Just in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. The yeah, I-Man hit by a wayward truck, we want the most, you see. <laughs> Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our, our prayers. We applaud Ted Kennedy's recent heroics. Kudos all around. Though it does nothing to bring back the girl that he drowned. Lord, hear our prayers. <laughs> Let us pray, I come on, that the material girl redeems her soul, and that no one else gets syphilis from her rancid hole, you see. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for the soul of the cat I refused to save. But look forward to river dancing on the young man's grave, you see. Lord, hear our prayers. God bless us and save us. Amen. The whole idea. Which is the belong and why? I love this part. Which is the belong and why? A. Collins, the young man's cat. Collins, my cat. B. Larry King. Larry <laughs> King. <laughs> I miss the belong. Which is the belong and why? Well, I would think I miss the belong. Oh, you stuttering old skunk, you begin. <laughs> but all three of these useless old puss pussies should have been euthanized a long time ago, you The answer I'm saying is B. Larry King does not belong because unlike the other two, Larry King has never tried to lick his own genitals because you've filthy old lizard yet. Oh, come on. Only really two pussy jokes I miss the mark. Get the hell out. Try to leave in here on the Sunday morning program. Jesus, God. Russert has to follow that. Oh, my God.
I'm not quite sure what else, but don't worry about it. It'll be, it'll be a good 45 minutes. There I, can, go. I can tell you that. I'm sorry to hear about your cat. My cat is dead, John. You know, they're reporting cordon off the streets up here in Westport for those services for later today. Is there any chance I can come over and lend some support of any kind? We really don't allow any white trash over in our part of Westport. <laughs> Thank you very much, Senator. Uh, as a uh, senator, as a, as a cat senator, you know, I can put something in the congressional record today. I normally do that when tragedies occur like this. So if I in some way relieve the pain and anxiety of your family, I want to be your senator in this particular case. Right. Any religious services associated with this? No, a cat was an agnostic. Uh -huh. This morning I want to help Deirdre cope with her grief. At first she will experience shock. Not that college is dead but that her husband isn't. <laughs> it should be him. And so she's feeling numb. And not the same way as she forces herself to feel once a month. There are those 45 seconds she refers to as paying the rent. <laughs> now, the cat's 18 years old. He could have done. The cat was 18 years old. Yes, Bernard. What, it's too much trouble to care for it? Uh, in its time of need, so you just just experimented with a thing like that? Maybe if you didn't hoard all the Vicodin pills or what, you know. <laughs> Put a little in a, you know, a little titty fish. I don't know, Bernard, you're, you're, you're just one. Well, yeah, you're an evil person. That's not true. It's, that it's, is it's, a, it's a big cat, so it's not a dog. I mean, you're way overreacting. Good morning, Don. I guess we all recognize you are in the stage of anger, in the stage of grief. Acceptance will come. Well, I'm a dog person myself, and, uh... We need to get a little closer just like we have. They're great. We're not a pink feeder. Oh, a little Himalayan oh. blue point. You need to be nice. shot. <laughs> you need to be shot. <laughs> you need to be put to sleep. I'm coming over there. <laughs> You're great. <laughs> oh, man. It's not like it. Yeah, the depths of your dream. Wow. What a name that is. That's stunning. Put that together, Lou. That is great. Hey, Dad, Larry Field. Oh, I mean, Senator Kennedy. Parking lot 
some emerged openly swirled from brown bag containers. Oh, you missed a point. Move on to another oh, story. <laughs> like that one. David Copperfield is planning his own version of the Immaculate Conception. In an interview with Germany's Galore magazine, the magician announced his next big show would feature a trick that would see him impregnate a woman without touching her. <laughs> I think he's going to call the Iron Man for some advice. The bold statement is all about. Shut up, that's all. Well, not hate. <laughs> uh, what's this Russian Malloy, Bill Keller, Jenny Miller story? It's, um, it's a story that appears on wait, page 27 of today's uh, Daily News. Apparently, uh, Bill Keller and uh, Judith Miller got into a screaming match. This was overheard by colleagues at the New York Times on uh, on Saturday night before they put the Sunday paper to bed. Of course, you know there was a tit for tat thing going on between Miller and uh, and Keller. Miller is said to have employed Keller to tone down the criticism of her in the piece. And uh, obviously, if you read this piece. <laughs> don't tell anything. She's not a skunk, man. She wants to man continue to manipulate the news. Yeah. And also, she's in, she's, you know, her, her thing today, she, she, and this is in Charles' newscast, of course, she, uh, she received the First Amendment Award from the Society of Professional Journalists. And right. She wanted to dub herself Mrs. Ronemuck. I think she'd be doing right. Yeah. So, well, I mean, that. In case you missed the Cardinal earlier this morning, the yeah. Cardinal is coming up. <laughs> Yeah. 
Mary Duke appointed the governor of Massachusetts before this stupid experiment worked. We did little sense. Big candidates could use their hands to wipe their foot. The men are ugly and the women smell. You can always tell when a woman is having a period, I just allowed you. No, 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 no. no. Only well, wearing one damn sock, BG. Oh, come on, here. The big president phone head out put him in the fire and scrub, If that wasn't enough, I was tomorrow. No. It appears that former Catholic slut Madonna has now transformed herself into some kind of church fashion wacky pious Jew. Sounds to me like some sneaky, cunning stunt, hey, Mr. Moore. <laughs> and not so stunning with rhymes with crunch, he just can't forgive me. Let us pray. Let us pray, Mr. Moore. Get your filthy heads down, you holy can just. Uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The I man hit by a wheel with truck me what the most, we do. <laughs> Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayer. We applaud Ted Kennedy's recent awards. Kudos all around. Though it does nothing to bring back the girl that he drowned. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. <laughs> that the material girl redeems her soul, and that no one else gets syphilis from her rancid hole because oh, God hear our prayers. Oh, oh, we pray for the soul of the cat I must refuse to save, but look forward to river dancing on the young man's grave, which is God hear our prayers. God bless us to save us, amen, the whole body of Which is the belonging wife? I love this part. Which is the belonging wife? A. Collins, the young man's cat. Collins, my cat. B. Larry Pig. Larry Pig. I'm Mr. Lamar, which is the belonging wife? Well, I would think I'm Mr. Lamar. Oh, you stuttering old skunk, to be Jesus. <laughs> well, I don't think these useless old puss pussy should have been euthanized a long time ago, to Jesus. <laughs> the answer I say is this. Larry King does not belong, because unlike the other two, Larry King has never tried to lick his own genitals, to Jesus. You're the old pussy yet. Oh, come on. <laughs> Only two pussy jokes, I'm Mr. Lamar. Get that out. I'm Mr. Lamar. Just disgusting. Oh, you know, why, why don't we need that? Ah, we don't. Oh, that's a little phony. Obviously, we need it because I want it, don't we? But where was the compassion? But I, I want it, but I don't ever expect it to be what it is. Oh, please stop. Yeah. <laughs> yes, really, please. Yeah, it's such kind of, <laughs> such, much half phony on my part. Except that I, I keep thinking that, you know, it's not going to go too far, and then what happens? Too far. Yeah. <laughs> it's like having a good prostitute. 25 till they are. You're on the I'm a Sitter Morning program on the radio all over the country and on... And they said, see, Charles has some news, and uh, he's got to do it for us now. I don't know what's going on. Updating the stuff, I mean, that's better. Than the yeah. There'll be a long break between the first and second sessions of Saddam's murder trial. It opened the day, and they're going to kill tens of thousands of people. Man. I love it. They're scheduled it out until November 28th, you know what I'm saying? Right. That's when it will resume. <laughs> Saddam was in court in Baghdad for about three hours today, and that was it. Said, okay, let's take a break. How long? Ten minutes, Judge? No, till November 28th. Fine. Oh, what's he going well, to give us uh, something to do, uh, something to watch besides football on uh, Thanksgiving? Honest to God, I had it. He looks like he should have a Grand Marnier in his hand, you know. <laughs> Doesn't he, though? Cupped in his uh, hand, uh, sending him a cigar in the other hand. Well, I think the new James Bond, I'm but uh, this guy would have been a Absolutely. better player. This guy would have been a Absolutely. better player, you know. He's kind of open and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Looks all right.
evacuations of, uh, of the Keys in advance of the storm. It get there in several days, but it is not expected when it reaches there to be at Category 5 proportions, probably. Just say curb, I don't remember the name of this, but what? Just say curb your enthusiasm, Sunday night? No. I right, didn't. Just, no, 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 I did. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it's, uh, it's kind of a, it wasn't as good. It had the potential to be fabulous. But it was more, it was more like a traditional sitcom than it should have been. But anyway, uh, it begins as the wife is having uh, a lunch with this Japanese artist. And uh, Larry shows up. You know? yeah. yeah. And he knows the guy because Larry's dad is in a nursing home with a Japanese artist's dad who is around 80. Yeah. And uh, they're just having a casual conversation. And... Uh, the Japanese guy said, uh, my dad, tell me the words, some other word came So my dad was a comic counselor for me. <laughs> and Larry, just, it's a, the, the guy is a genius. Yeah, right? it is. Oh, absolutely. As good as, as whiteness does, he is performing, you know. He takes a beat and he says, let me, uh, <laughs> you don't understand that. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
say it is still going up. Regional officials now say more than 79,000 people died of 25,000 from the previously estimated 54,000 dead. Well, what does that mean? That means that there's a no, lot of more people that have died than they officially uh, initially thought. No, it means more I'm a transport for you. More salsa, more turquoise buffalo tortilla chips, more I'm a trans coffee. <laughs> more of a great salad dressing. Absolutely. So, nicely done. Yeah, I'm a transport sponsor of the hospital with a hundred and fifty million dollar capital improvement plan. Near Queens. I don't feel good, Are you finished yet? Well, Janine wrecked her truck out at the ranch, but uh, uh, she's okay. She's back in the office. And uh, if you are between 11 and 17, you have cancer or blood disorder or something. And you want to learn how to be an old-time cowboy, you can go to the Iron Stranus. It doesn't cost anything. We pay for Not only do we pay for everything, give you, we'll give you uh, uh, Wrangler jeans and shirts and Justin Cowboy boots. And, did you see those Justin Cowboy boots I have? Those are neat, aren't they? They're not horrible, like yeah. some of them have been. Well, those are not Justin boots, those other ones. No, I bet they're what you don't want. The pink ones and the blue oh, ones. Those are, are standard. Those are God. Justin Bruce makes cowboy boots. Thank heavens. So the kids get those and resist all cowboy hats and I'm just going to t-shirts and hats and so on and anything they need. And uh, all you need to do is uh, have your doctor's approval. Mm -hmm. And you can call the Imus Ranch at, because uh, they're signing up kids for next summer. I can't guarantee that you get to go, but... Uh, Sounds. Can I do a Great Sounds commercial? Hi, you ready? All right. Yeah, Great Sounds. And when did you do the Great Sounds commercial? Fine. Here, here's Imus for Great Sounds. Yeah. Uh, the Great Ones of Great Sounds have all the greatest names in audio and video at low, low, and lower than low prices uh, because Great Sounds... Well, well, Tom, can't you tell I'm excited? No, you sound like John Bowser Bauman. Because Great Sounds is New York's mecca for stereo, TV, video, and all your electronic Christmas gift needs. Panasonic, Hitachi, Akai, Awa. What the hell is Awa? World famous brand names at ridiculously low prices. Names like Mitsubishi, Marantz, Pioneer, Sansushi, Advent. Sansushi. <laughs> oh, Sansushi. What is it? I like that Sansushi. Well, I don't know what, the, what it is. And Mitsub Mitsubishi. Yeah. Well, what is it? Mitsubishi? No, that's good. Go ahead. Okay. And there are, friends, and you get Sanyo, a uh, programmable compact audio digital disc player. From I don't know how many people realize that Imus used to work in uh, the mines. $198, that's fantastic. State of the art. This is what happens when you take a miner and put him on the radio. <laughs> that's right, the state of the art technology for $198. In fact, Great Sounds is packed to the rafters for the holidays with tapes, turntables, receivers. He said audio and video Mitsu, Mitsu Sushi. <laughs> incredible guests, incredible guests at incredibly low, low prices. Great Sounds is New York's mecca. Who wrote this? This is really just stupid. And saying sushi. Uh, they have two anyway. super, uh, babe, New York locations, 45 Warren Street between Church and West Broadway in Lower Manhattan, and 14 West 40th Street off 5th in Midtown. Yeah. Hey, what's Klecko doing out there? Is he signing autographs or something? Yeah, probably. Probably getting all the girls you're trying to get. Yeah. Also, <laughs> you may want to go to... This sounds like a good deal. How come they don't advertise in the morning? They can't pay the, can't pay the rate, right? Yeah. Because the rates are about twice as much in the morning. Did you know that? Just give me that. <laughs> well, thank you. To, thank you, Iris, for reading the commercial. Yeah, so I'm just is here. I'm his, uh, yeah. I'm his girlfriend's back in town, and yet he still chooses to hang out with I us. I don't understand this. Did you break up with her yet, or what? 
You still with her? Sure. I am. <laughs> Super, babe. I like when you say that. Super. When you say babe, I like the way you say yeah. it. You say it better than Richard Belzer. Thank you. Okay. Howard, we can't have these long moments of silence here. I'm thinking what I should do next. Well, I wonder if I should do some commercials or should I continue talking to Imus. I think I'm pretty much fed up with Imus. I don't have much of my... Oh, really? I was oh, say, that, what oh, can oh, you oh, talk to really Imus nice, about Howard. now? That really makes me feel we, great. We talked to Imus about uh, what he's doing for Ethiopia, and I thought that was great. Yeah. Not for Graham only today, right? No, no. And we, thought of, we talked to him hey, about his MTV deal. Where's Lou Ferrigno? Yeah. And we, hey, shut up for a second, man. Is that really Lou Ferrigno? No, seriously, when you start... <laughs> <laughs> Shut up for a minute. Let me establish the line. Go ahead. Let me do a setup here. Okay. Got are your fingernails dirty or what? I've been working all day. Why don't you clean them? He's been working. Working at what? MTV. <laughs> they got him cleaning the tape machines over there. So it's part of his deal. Anyway, um... <laughs> Anyway, we talked to Imus about his MTV deal. Yeah. We talked to him about what he's doing on his morning show. Uh-huh. You're going to get a lot of girls with those eyes at the other Klecos, Bruce, really. Oh, dear. If Bruce is going to Club Midnight, the Bruce, Klecos. Does, does Bruce glow in the dark? Really? You look like you're radioactive, Bruce. Then we talked to Imus about, uh... We didn't talk about his play, but I'm kind of burnt out on that. Yeah, he's not doing any appearances. Oh, yeah. Did you know what was going on outside of the Club Benet when, I, when you were there? Somebody was selling pictures of you? Yeah, some guy was selling pictures of me for $5 a pop. Oh, oh great. That, that's real good. That makes me look good. Because people think that I'm doing that. Yeah. Well, you were doing it, Al. Well, shh. <laughs> <laughs> Could he get $5 for a picture of you? Uh, as a matter of fact, he was getting 15 Oh, please. $15 for a you picture. You can write the radio station and get a free picture. I know. It doesn't make any sense. That stuff about acid making you hallucinogenic and crazy? It, yeah. Here, not here. true. It's not. No problem. <laughs> we'll be okay, Howard. Completely unfounded. Uh, no, okay. Let me just say something. Yes. To the kids listening out there, especially the young people, and immature adults like I'm <laughs> Oh, thank you. The uh, the drug thing, uh, very bad, very yes. bad. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Thank just, you. Yeah, take it from him. Jean anyway. Harris, you keep doing drugs. <laughs> well, she's in the in jail now. I don't think she's getting drugs. She's very well, upset, drugs too. In jail. Yeah, yeah, really. Well, not her and her little pink cell. She's teaching school or something. But anyway... Now, let me uh, say something on a serious note here. What? She shot a man in cold blood. Oh, no, she was trying to kill herself, Howard. Oh, oh yeah. Well, she missed. <laughs> shot him six times. <laughs> I don't care, man. She's not getting out. As long as I'm in New York and as long as I'm in the position I'm in, which is slightly bent over the console. I uh, no way she's getting out of prison. Well, we'll see, because the justices will make their decision in a few weeks as to whether she should get a new trial or not. And federal... Your grandmother, remember they juiced her a while back? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so they put rat poison in everybody's uh, yeah. uh, oatmeal. Yeah, she was kind of gruesome. Yeah, I took uh, three bennies, and it made me want to kill them all. <laughs> and so it took about five years I just Robin. kept opening the script on them bennies and kept offing people. Uh, uh, I was, I was but I love Jesus. Ah, don't you love this? They all love Jesus all of a sudden. <laughs> suddenly, suddenly they grab a Bible and they all love Jesus. After these axe murders, you know, they fell down and had a bunch of money. Yeah, well, I'm just trusting uh, Jesus. Uh, you um, we Jesus? got another story to do. Hey, I'm man. Yeah, we got to move don't, on Let me here. just say one other thing. Don't you think Jesus should have the option of deciding whether these guys could believe in him or not? Right, hold it a second. One second, sir. Yeah. Robin. Yeah. <laughs> what? He's rambling again. No, you can't shut him up. Something about Jesus. <laughs> is, he, is he doing the belly so hard? I think he's doing his act. <laughs> God's going to punish you, Howard. Okay, federal and local authorities are investigating the safety of fake Cabbage Patch dolls. Uh, they say the dolls carry a strong odor of kerosene. Some officials say the dolls might be highly inflammable and chemically toxic. And by the way, remember those Cabbage Patch dolls I just gave away last year? <laughs> they were all fake. <laughs> no, no, they weren't. You can't the flammable Cabbage Patch goods are Richard Pryor dolls. <laughs> <laughs> the FBI has begun a nationwide investigation of these dolls. WNBC News Time. Yeah, there were two Five FBI. Minutes. There were two FBI agents by Imus's office this morning trying to arrest them. <laughs> After five o'clock. And now a word from Honeywell. <laughs> 
Providing farm supplies used to be a simple business. Son, head into town and fetch a couple of sacks of seed. Yeah. And a new blade for the hole. Uh, yeah. Now, skip out. As things grew more complicated, Honeywell worked with its customers to develop a computer system, one that helps farm supply wholesalers keep track of their enormous inventories. This is a unified solution. That is, a system that solves the whole problem. A system developed together with the people who use it. This unified solution gives farm supply wholesalers the control they need to do the job right. Son, head into town and order a half ton of 75 days seed yeah. and 200 gallons of diesel fuel and have the chopper back for supper time. Now, farm supply wholesalers have a unified solution. What about you? Call Honeywell. Together, we can find the answers. <laughs> I got a deaf engineer and a deaf disc jockey sitting next to me. Oh, that's really terrific, Arn. Bruce, you can't hear well either? Bruce is deaf in his own. Well. Just to context, Bruce, you look like a psychopath. I'm Bruce, serious. which ear are you deaf in? What? Oh, the, uh, <laughs> the, the right one. The right one? That's why when we do live commercials mm. and the music is uh, jacked up higher than my voice, <laughs> I start complaining about it. And it's because Bruce can't hear. I don't see how NBC can hire a deaf guy to be an engineer. It's, I don't know. Choose Cavalier, the hottest selling Chevrolet. <laughs> and your, oh, it and your choice of sedan, sporty type 10 Cooper, Hatcher, convenient size wagon, Chevrolet sponsors, the same copy trap report with WNBC's Donna Fiducia. <laughs> Howard, outbound at the Holland Tunnel, still 10, outbound link, BC belt. I'm Donna Fiducia on WNBC. Tell me. I'm <laughs> um, just uh, discussing the altruism of the deed he's uh, performing in the yeah, morning. Super. <laughs> anyway, uh... WNBC Sports. WNBC Sports. Thank you. The Islanders and the Devils battled out on the ice tonight at Nassau Coliseum. In basketball, the Nets are playing the Boston Celtics tonight in Hartford. Hey, the Mets got Gary Carter, man, from Montreal. Best catcher in baseball. Yeah, that's what I hear. The Mets are going right to the World Series. Sure. <laughs> no, they you know, Who cares? <laughs> they say that every year. WNBC. Clear tonight, the low in the 30s. Sunshine tomorrow morning. Clouds in the afternoon. Highs in the low 50s. Thursday, a chance of morning showers, then partly cloudy, windy, and colder. Does the guy who does, does a, that belching WNBC thing, does he realize that you have to pay him every time you play that? Yeah, we are. We're paying okay. him a fortune. Fifty-one degrees now at nine minutes after five o'clock. That's what's happening. I'm Robin Quivers, WNBC, New York.
19 WNBC. Finally, match game, 1984. <laughs>